Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be all about beamforming. How I can do beamforming. What is basic basic idea behind beamforming is. Uh, this is an amazing picture uh, that explains what beamforming is. I'm just going to walk you through it. And then I have a flow graph which is there uh, uh, in GNU Radio Companion. I'm going to actually walk you through this flow graph as well where I am simulating a signal and I'm using two different antennas to receive them and to show you how they are constructively add uh, to increase the signal strength or power uh, and so on. So the idea behind signal uh, beamforming is that you have this multiple sources of transmitting antennas that is transmitting it and you're receiving it through multiple antennas but these antennas has a physical distance called D. So these are your receiving antennas and definitely there is going to be a phase difference or might be a physical difference uh, between the antennas, antennas distance, and there's definitely going to be a delay. Let's say if this waveform reaches this antenna earlier, as compared to this waveform that is receiving at, at, at the receiving antenna in terms of little bit delay. So how can I actually manage these delays to add them, constructively add them, and to, to achieve a waveform that looks like something like this, that looks more directional. So basically what you're trying to do, you have multiple signals coming in and you want to focus it in one direction. So that's the idea behind beamforming is. And we're going to look at uh, this in a little bit using software defined radio and GNU radio companion. So in order for me, so in GNU radio companion, this is the idea, basic idea behind this. So I have my SAMP rate, uh, that is one mega. And then you have a noise source. Uh, I have included noise source, Gaussian noise source. No noise source and signal source are being multiplied together using a poly polyphase arbitrarily resampler. This is basically a resampler, sort of like uh, jacking up your signal to provide a wide band capability of your signal. So basically the idea behind this is, and there's a throttle block, and then I'm using a virtual sync. So virtual sync, I think I've used it in my previous video as well, uh, which is on ASK. Uh, where I have used virtual sync to actually uh, demonstrate that, okay, this is a sync, and then I have used a source. Uh, so sort of like uh, to depict that, okay, you know what, this is a source that is transmitting, and then this is this, uh, this is what is receiving through virtual uh, source, source like this. So, so this is what is the signal is being generated through this. I have a noise source, I have a signal source, and both of these sources are actually multiplied together to generate a signal and that is being transmitted through virtual sync. Stream ID for virtual sync and source is the same. Uh, this is the basic idea behind antenna. So this is depicting an idea of an antenna that I have one receiving antenna. So I have a signal that is coming in and then I have two antennas. So this first thing that you're seeing right now is actually a model of an antenna. So my signal is being received by an antenna and we wanna make sure at the end of the day how they are being constructively added and uh, if they are added, what type of a gain would I see? And would I receive that beam forming the beam that I want, which is look something like this without having a, uh, with, with minimized nulls. Uh, this is what I want to depict. So I have my signal that is coming in from my virtual sync and is going into a source. I have a channel model. This is a block diagram for channel model. This is sort of like a noise source. Uh, so you have a noise voltage frequency offset that is zero epsilon value default values tabs are one seed seed is the value because this channel model block actually has a noise source built in so so this thing so just like in a gaussian noise source if you see it over here right here that you can see that you need a seed value to actually generate this noise source basically that's what it is just need a seed value to generate a noise source. So this channel model basically depicts everything that, that is there. Uh, you need to have a seed value and so on. So this signal is being fed. Uh, you can look at it in a virtual sync, which we are calling it antenna one. Also, I am also made a similar thing, uh, which is called antenna two, that has a virtual sync, but the seed value now has changed. The seed value now is two because I want to have a source, random noise source that is a little bit different. Just to show that, you know what, due to some multipath variable, uh, the noise is a little bit different than the first antenna. 
Now, just like in any of these antennas, there's definitely going to be a delay between one signal, incoming signal, and another signal. That's why you have this delta function, that there is going to be some type of a delay. So that delay is depicted by this block. Uh, that is called a delay difference. Uh, there is this entry called delay difference, which is right here. All right. And this delay difference is in the form of a samples, how many samples you're looking at it. All right. Uh, now, both of these signals, as you can see in the diagram, so they are being added together. That's why these antennas, these virtuals, if the output of these channel models are added together. As you can clearly see, let me just come out from this. So this is that virtual source. Uh, the uh, the antenna, the transmitting antenna. I have two antennas. This These models are depicting two different antennas. So first antenna that has a channel model that has a seed value of one. The second antenna that has a seed value of two. Then you can see this delay. So this is that first antenna. This is that second antenna that is showing me that delay. That delay is being controlled by a delay difference. As you can see at the output, both of these are being added together. Indeed, they are being added together, and I'm looking at an FFT of this antenna. All right, so basically what we're looking at, we're looking at an FFT of an antenna first uh, without any delay, uh, sorry, without the addition, and this is the output of this second antenna with a delay, which is this, and, and then we're looking at the addition of both of these antennas as well. So now I'm going to play this diagram, and we're going to look at something. All right, so let me just quickly run this diagram. All right, we're going to wait. You can, okay, so this is basically when there is no delay, there is no phase difference, there is no frequency difference, there is no delay difference. So these are the four parameters which is actually going to tell me that if there is going to be an addition of these signals with respect, if, if they are constructively going to be, uh, if, they are, if they are going to be constructively being added together or not. This is the idea. Uh, so this is the addition of this. So if I were to look at it, both of these signals are added together and it's forming a higher signal strength at negative 34 dBm. So this is the output of that beam forming that is taking place. So basically we're saying both of these antennas are being constructively added. The signal that is incoming, they are being uh, uh, added together. That's why you're getting this output. So both of them are added together. You're getting an output like this. So this is the output. This is an input of your first antenna, all right? So this is somewhere around negative 39, antenna two, okay. Uh, so this is somewhere around negative 39 dB. Now, if I were to have a blue, close this. This is also somewhere around negative 39. Both of them are added together. You have a beam forming output of about negative 35 dB. So that's, that's the addition of these two antennas. And you're, you're seeing the output in green. Uh, let me just turn both of those on. Now, what happens? Let's do something else. Let's increase the SNR of our signal. So these are the three parameters which are actually controlling me, the, controlling the transmitting frequency. So let me just simply increase the SNR, which means my signal has a higher SNR. Yes. So when when my signal has a highest, a higher SNR, still you would still see that difference between about uh, compared to this negative twenty six and negative 32, so about somewhere around 6 dB. You're, you're seeing a difference of, so this is negative 26, and this is 32. So 4 plus 2 is, uh, there's also, uh, so 6 dB gain that you're seeing when it comes to beam forming. So in having a SNR of 10, now let's introduce a phase difference, and let's see what happens when I introduce a phase difference. If there is going to be a phase difference between the frequency, the incoming frequency, so let's look at this diagram first. If there is going to be a phase difference, let's say okay, if I have this signal which is there and then I have another signal, so there is definitely going to be a phase difference. So what will happen to my addition of these two signals? Will it have a higher signal strength? Higher signal strength means it will have a thinner front lobe or main lobe and reduce nulls. Let's look at it. Let's change this to 90 degrees and let's see what happens. Definitely not. When there is going to be a difference of 90 degrees, I am significantly seeing the signal is going down. I, I can see that. 
I hope you have noticed that or not. Okay, this is when there is no signal difference. We're looking at a signal that is somewhere around negative 27, approximately negative 27 dB. Now, when I introduce a signal difference of 90 degrees, as you can see that my beam forming output is, has, has gone down a little bit. It's somewhere around negative 30. So I have a loss of about 3 dB. Let's say if I get like 180 degrees, let's see what happens at 180 degrees. Oh, then, then, then definitely, definitely I can see that my signal strength has tremendously goes down and I will have a destructive interference this because the addition of these two signals um, at 180 degrees apart is actually chewing up my entire signal, which you can see it here because if I have a difference of negative 180 degree, both of these will cancel out and I won't, I won't see anything. So my green has gone down to about negative 40 dB somewhere around close to negative 40 dB, yeah. So let's leave this as is. And let's introduce something else as well. Let's introduce a frequency difference, which is actually a Doppler difference. So let's introduce a difference of about 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So 0 0.1 tenth of a difference, so which is like 0 0.1. It's about 100 milli, let's see what happens. As you can see that this has gone down and this is coming up now so the phase difference was easy to see because we're just when we when i introduce a phase difference of zero that you can see that signal has tremendously goes down but at the same time there could also be an effect which is going to be based on doppler doppler basically what it does is actually due to the change in frequency you might have a constructive interference or destructive interference so the green graph by having a frequency difference of 0.1 hertz which means one tenth of a hertz you will see a periodic dropout in your signal strength and this is what we are observing that we will we might have a periodic dropout that your signal might be at negative 28 db 27 db or it might be going down due to doppler effect at negative 38 dB. So this basically the frequency difference is actually we're looking at the signal which is telling me about the periodic dropout of that signal that you will encounter a periodic dropout in your signal as you can see in a beam forming diagram. The second thing that you need to notice is this. Uh, let's let's do this. Let's change this back to zero. All right. Uh, let's let's normalize this. And the next thing I want to look at, let's look at the frequency delay difference. This is in terms of a, in terms of samples. So if I change this to let's say one sample, that you can you can clearly see there is okay. You know what? We're not visualizing this correctly. Let me just do this and let me change this bandwidth to bandwidth of this white band signal to somewhere around 500 kilo. All right. So let's let's look at this. So, so still, so I'm, instead of looking at 100 kilo, now we're looking at a bandwidth about 500 kilo, 500 kilohertz. And because why? Because the total sample rate is about one, uh, one mega. So I'm looking at a bandwidth of one. And let me change the difference of samples now. So how many samples? So if I have a sample difference of one, that look at this. So, so you will have an increase in frequency but you will see a, a, a destructive interference somewhere along the samples. Let me let me get this samples to be like three or something like that. All right, let's, let's look at it. You know what, let's, let's do this zero. No, let's do this. Let me change this to 15 and uh, and and all right let me change this to 15 and uh, let's let's make it a little bit wider let's do like about 700 here we go all right uh, let's do a little bit more uh, let's go about signal strength to be about 900 all right so now this is so the delay difference in terms of samples are going to be what how many sample difference that you're seeing the sample de delay difference is about three so you're seeing one two three peaks so at this time right you will see a signal normalized I mean you will see an addition of those two signals but definitely definitely after sample one 
you will see a periodic dropout and uh, not a periodic dropout you will see a dropout which means your signal at this point will be adding destructively then it'll start adding constructively for about this much of time and then it's going to start adding destructively and then constructively and then destructively so you might even see a beam width that that looks a little bit thinner then it's going to be a fatter which means you you might be encountering some type of a side lobes like these uh, when the beam forming is taking place so these are the things and this is just some parts per million value so let me just go here uh, so delay difference with respect to parts per million so let's do about 0.1 I'm sorry 0.1 and you can see the effect of that as well uh, when you have a parts per million value of about 0.1 then you will see a definitely a periodic dropout and that thing is going to change continuously as you can see this this is going to continuously change this you will have a, con a, a periodic dropout then periodic dropout and so on and then we'll continuously changing the 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 addition and subtraction of your your signal strength so so that's the idea behind beam forming uh, using two different antennas uh, if you have any questions uh, leave it in a comment section and don't forget to like and you can just keep adding different antennas if you wanna if you wanna simulate antennas that are like three four five just simply add simply add exactly the same flow graph that you're seeing here and then just simply adding delays and then at, uh, in, uh, in, uh, means increase the number of addition just like as we can see in the diagram you can have one antennas two antennas three antennas and and based on that you can control the output of your uh, of your beam beam width of your beam forming uh, a graph which is, looks in green which which looks something like this in green so so if you have any questions uh, leave it in the comment section and, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and thanks for watching.